It's time for Lawrenceburg Almost Live with your hosts, Tiffany and Tia. Welcome to Lawrenceburg Almost Live, and I'm Tiffany Azanero here with Tia Chilton at the Coffee House. Yay! Yay! Yeah. But we're not live. We're not live. We thought we were going to be, but um, Mr. Producer. We're totally throwing him under the bus. He forgot. We to... are totally <laughs> throwing him under the bus. the bus. He forgot the connecting cable. An adapter of some sort. And um, it's Mr. Producer's fault. All his fault. Yeah. So now he's got to go home and do more work. Because when it's live, he doesn't have to do as much work. But when it's not live, he's got to do a lot more work. So, haha on you. But we are here at Off the Ground Coffee House. And Tia's got her uh, yes. luscious drink. It's banana. She loves that banana I love drink. me some bananas. It's like a banana milkshake. It's a banana. Look at our drink already half of it. Mm. It tastes like a banana milkshake, banana except, that it doesn't have, except that it doesn't have bananas in it, but it tastes and like And it had a whole milk. bunch of whipped cream on it, and I you just did. wanted to... Well, you could have. I'm trying to get back on the wagon. I've added a few LBs. <laughs> My wagon, the wheels didn't just fall off. The whole wagon just broke down and it's disintegrated into the ground. <laughs> so... <laughs> ain't got no wheels, ain't got no base, ain't got nothing. We went to the mall Saturday. Because my girl Leah, uh -huh. Leah Sutton is now Leah Kurtzing. Uh -huh. She got married on Sunday, she right? She got married on Sunday. Congratulations, Leah and Blake, by the way. They are in Punta Cana right now. But anyway, um, Leah got married, and the boys, you know, boys at this age, any, kids at this age grow like weeds. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, cotillion clothes have already been outgrown. Mm -hmm. We had to go buy clothes for the wedding. Mm -hmm. So, we're at the mall. You know what's at the mall. The cheesecake factory. Oh, I was like, girls? No, no. <laughs> There's all kinds of girls at the mall. About the girls, no. <laughs> the cheesecake factory's there. So. Oh, yeah, so so much for the wagon. So much for the diet wagon. I mean, I just <laughs> fell right off of it. <laughs> um, The celebration cheesecake is like to die for. Yeah, I've never had that one before. Uh, you've got to get it. Yeah. I try not to go to cheesecake factory well, very often. Dylan and I, Carson doesn't like. Cheesecake. cheesecake. So Dylan and I decided that we were gonna both get one that we like so we could split it. Uh -huh. You could take the leftovers home and have it later. No, we took it home and we were oh, like okay. cutting it in half and he was getting this half and I was, oh, it's so good. Thanks. So I've got even more LBs but to lose. But you won't drink my banana Cause drink. I gotta get back on the wagon. I guarantee this ain't got as many calories as that cheesecake. I know. It. Tell me about it. Like they even put the calories on the menu now. And I it's know. Like Five thousand two hundred and twenty-seven. They're required to do that by law. I don't need to know. Yeah, I just ignore it. Go on. Because my wheels fell off, and so did my base. <laughs> Dust. I okay. Even, I even had like a good burger too. <laughs> Can't anyway, go okay. I'm sorry. All right. So speaking of food, let's talk about Hefe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, because I went to a restaurant. <laughs> right, that's my point. <laughs> yeah, because there's no he there's no Hefe outbreak at Cheesecake Factory, right? No, but in case you weren't aware, that's one of the ways that Hefe is passed is through. That's a nice segue right there. <laughs> right, <laughs> top of my notes, Hefe. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to talk about Cheesecake Factory, but it worked out great for me. So. <laughs> Now it makes me want to puke. <laughs> well, at least you don't have hep A that we know that of. That is true. So we had a hep A scare at the high school yes. last week. That was a horrible one call to get. Yes. And then she texted me and said, is your kid okay? Because I have a kid at the high school now. She's like, is your kid okay? Was she exposed? And I'm like, I don't think so. But there, apparently there was 350 kids that were exposed. That is a scary, scary phone call. Yes. Ball. I mean, so, granted, I don't have a child at the high school, but my nephew's there. So right. I immediately texted Lane. Lane, are you okay? And then I'm calling his dad. Do you have him vaccinated? Has he been vaccinated? Are you up to date well, on his vaccinations? You know, it was a new law this year mm -hmm. that your children had to have Hep A vaccinations before they started school in August, mm -hmm. apparently of which a lot did not. Mm -hmm. And so now they are making that a requirement for the school, I think, by what, this Friday? They have to have their head days? Yes, or they can't go back to school on Monday. Right. So, so I got don't the have... one call again. Yes. Did you get the one call again? No. Well, my I kids got... have been vaccinated. Well, mine have too, but I hadn't, they hadn't updated their records oh, in no, the system. I didn't get that. 
So I got the call and I'm like, panic. What? <laughs> You beat a bad they gotta go to back to school on Monday. Like I gotta go to work. They gotta go to school. So, uh, making so if, the phone call to the doctor. If you don't have your children vaccinated, they have to be vaccinated before Friday, or they cannot return to school on Monday. Yes. Apparently, so, he didn't like your bottle in the shop. He did. <laughs> he just get took out her of drink. Water bottle. <laughs> he just took our drink right I out of the shop. I hope my mouth doesn't get dry. <laughs> so. Um, I don't personally have any friends that don't believe in vaccinating their children, mm -hmm. but I know that there are some. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if we have any of those in Anderson County, but apparently like it's just, I mean, I just do whatever my doctor tells me to do. Right. So. Right. But there are some people who feel that you none know, of their kids should be vaccinated. And yeah. I personally don't agree with that, but that's their right. And. I just don't know what's going to happen to their kids. I guess they can homeschool. Well, I'm not going to start telling my opinions. Right. <laughs> oh, come on. Why not? It's called Tiffany and Tia's show. So whose opinions would you expect to get? Tiffany's and Tia's. Just saying. Okay, so anyway, let's talk about, we're done talking about Hebe. Just make sure you get your kids vaccinated. I'm just saying. Well, mine, mine are, they get to go to school on Monday. Yeah. But just in case, uh, Dylan has a well check appointment on Friday. But, I, but he's all good. I've already had all yeah. the immunizations sent I to actually, the schools and everything. I did that right after school got out in June so that I would already have it done and have to worry about it all summer. Well, they, they've been vaccinated. Dylan's been vaccinated since 2008, and Carson's been vaccinated since 2009. Well, my kids had had their first hep A. But they hadn't had their second hip A. Mine had already had their so second one. So now they too. had their second hip A. So we're good now. We we've been good to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. So Mr. Producer is being he's moving all stuff around. He's and taking care of me. He's, <laughs> he's putting my water over. Y'all can't I see, but he's him. putting the drink back over here. So he she may can have forgotten it. the adapter, but he's hooking me up with some water. Because he knows what's out his bread's butter. Going. <laughs> I know he does. He's so good. He's so good. speaking of Mr. Producer. Um, his lovely wife, my sister-in-law, Vicki, her birthday is Saturday, so I'm going to wish her happy early happy birthday. Happy early birthday. And he is taking her to Asheville, North Carolina for her birthday. Does she know that you aren't besting out a secret, no, are you? she knows. Oh, Who okay. do you think picked it out? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> like, We're giving really? him way too much credit, right. aren't we? Like, she no dummy. Okay. How do you think he's got as far as he's got? Because he's married to her. I know. He's got a good one. <laughs> no. He, he had to have somebody take care of him. He is my daddy's son. And so now my other brother has a good wife that takes care of him, Kelly. See? So see, see they, yes. they both of my brothers needed good women to take care of them. That's so right. Kelly Chilton, you they know, just got married I, in July. I do believe that every, every, and I'm saying this because I have two boys, that mm -hmm. every man needs a good woman, woman. to yes. help get him where he needs to be. I don't know about your house, but when I was growing up, my mama laid my daddy's church clothes out on Sunday morning. <laughs> said, no. You were in that. I mean, my dad was... Well, he was quite the snazzy dresser. Yes. But my mama would lay my daddy's church clothes out on Sunday I'm pretty morning. sure we probably, maybe, at one time or another, went into major debt just to make sure my daddy looked good. <laughs> well, he did have to wear suits all the time. Well, I know, but now he could have just gone to the J.C. Penney's and gotten a suit. He didn't have to get the suits my daddy that only he had got. To, my but, daddy only had to dress up on Sunday. Your daddy had to dress up every day. I know, but... Um, I've, a big I've heard the stories about my daddy and his suits, but, <laughs> and for him to tell me that I had champagne taste with a beer pocketbook, I'm like, hello, hello where pot, do you think I got that? Hello, pot, this is kettle. Yes, exactly. Okay, so let's talk about football. Okay. So I went to the game last week, because you know who we played? Mercer County. We played Mercer County. Guess what? At Mercer County last Friday night. So... I was afraid it was going to rain, and I was like, oh, I don't want to go set in the rain. But it didn't. It held off. Because uh, it had rained before that. <clears throat> and it's our rival. Yes. Because well. I've made it for sure. Again, <laughs> our rival. Yeah. So, um, I will say, because they have it at the Elvis Johnson Field, which is the old high school, Harrisburg High School field. It's not at Mercer County. It's it behind What's the old Harrisburg High School. Elvis Johnson. It's named after Coach Elvis Johnson. He was the Harrisburg High School <clears throat> coach, right? Correct. Back Correct. when we were in high school. Correct. Okay. I remember him. Correct. He was a big man. Yes. And so were his boys. Yes. Who played I remember them. Okay. Yes, I remember them. So, um, this They were the, back in our, my age. Yes. 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 I remember them. No, not their boys. Uh, well, mm -hmm. his boys are the same age as my little brother, and he's a little bit younger than you. So, close. 
Cool. One of them was, wasn't he? Koi just turned, the twins were Koi's age. Koi but there was an older one, wasn't there? Maybe. Okay, anyway, go ahead. Anyway, so the Alvis Johnson Field, so I had not been there for quite some time. They have updated it, and it looks really nice. So you I might was, need to apologize I was for that field. I was pleasantly surprised at how nice the field was. However, and the bleachers and all that. However, they still don't have a visitor side, so everybody has to sit on the same side. Oh, no. Mm -mm. Which is just weird. But the, there is a lot of stands. Okay. Now, granted, <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot. So, Anderson County sit, like, on if you're looking at the back of the bleachers, we sit all on the right-hand side. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so, then you had the big press box, and then the Mercer County fans were kind of on the other end. Um, so, we were separated, but it's just not the same. And our student section was awesome. We couldn't hear Mercer student section at all <laughs> because our kids were great. There was a lot of them, and they were doing. See, they know <clears throat> how to take this yes. rivalry. And their theme last Friday night was Redneck Night, so they all had on cut-off jean shorts and flannel shirts and ball going caps to, turned around backwards. Going to County. <laughs> yes, and <clears throat> my other child, y'all know, y'all heard me talk about Lauren Boblet. She actually had a sign that said her and uh, one of her friends had a sign that said, he said we were going to break up, but we could still be cousins. <laughs> As a joke to go on their redneck night. I was like, oh, it was a joke, but it was funny. So, it's for murder. Yeah. yeah. Hey, <laughs> Lauren posted on Instagram. I'm taking it. I'm stealing it. So anyway, so That's hilarious. <clears throat> so we, I didn't get there until late. Because Mallory had pitching and hitting lessons and all that. So, the game had already started. But, by halftime, we were ahead 28 to nothing. Big goose egg. Putting a whooping on the Titans. So, went to halftime. While the band was out there playing, we had a, a lightning delay. Um, and then it kept just going into lightning delay, blah, 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 blah. And so, finally, they called the game and we won 28 to nothing. We only played one half. Personally... I think it's because they were afraid we're going to run the score up even more. I'm just saying. I don't know that. I'm just guessing. Well, you know, if the second that's... half was anything like the first half, right. it would have been 56 to right. goose egg. Right. Right. Remember that, Titans. <laughs> yeah, I want a Titans. I don't care. <laughs> you make fun of Titans all you want. I'm not a Titan. <laughs> My mama so, was so cute. She was on Facebook <clears throat> updating everybody on the score. Good. She was like, How'd she know what the score she was? She was, um, there was something on the internet that you could keep up with the game. Well, Twitter. If you follow John Herndon no, on Twitter. No, there was a live something on the radio, maybe. On they the radio. had something going probably on. Probably WHBN probably covered it. Maybe so. Um, probably. You know, I was talking to somebody. She today. listens to WHBN. You know that's where it came from. Okay, so I was talking to somebody today, and I was like, you know, Lawrenceburg Almost Live reminds me a little bit of when my mama and Brenda Bowen uh -huh. used, used to, to get the Lawrenceburg News on the, on on the, the Harrisburg WHB. Radio. That's WHBN. So me and Tia are Wanda and Brenda. <laughs> my mama still listens to WHBN and she lives in Lawrenceburg now. I know, I know. So that reminded me of that a little yeah, bit. So. Every day. Mm -hmm. Gotta find out the news. Mm -hmm. anyway. they, they don't do that anymore. But so. our football team. Okay, so what did our boy CC do? Um, I didn't see the first part of the game. Oh, okay. It was already like 14 to nothing when I got there. I can't remember if I... I know I read about it. And, of course, I was sitting up with the Chilton clan, and we were talking. Imagine that. Right. So, I wasn't engaged as much as I normally am. And So, were you sitting with the Mercer County people? No, I was with oh, the Chilton clan. Oh, you were with clan. the Anderson County Chilton clan. Okay. And, look, and so there was two of our Chilton clan who still live in Mercer County, and their kids go to Mercer County. Guess where they were at? Sitting in the Anderson children's clan on Anderson yes. County yes. side. And I even said to those two boys, boys, they're grown men. I said to those two boys, look, y'all the only two that wasn't smart enough to move to Lawrenceburg. And they were like, I'm rubbing off on Tina. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to give them a hard time. It was Chuck and Alan. Yeah. Nichols. Um, so we, we give them a hard time. They were sitting over there on the Anderson County, not really sides, but Anderson County section with the Chilton clan. Because, you know, Cousin Janet had... Candy, because she has candy every week, bags of candy, and we were all eating Reese's Cups. 
Reese Cups. And there were Snickers and Paydays and mm, Twix. Sni oh, those are all my favorites. Yes. Big bags, like those big See, gallon bags. I am a Chilton. <laughs> yes. I get yes. that from the Chilton. And look, Janet knows that's how she gets people to come up and sit with her. She, was she, like, brings, she candy. brings candy. And she restocks it every week. Janet, you We're are like, Janet, bring time for the candy. Bring out the candy. So she will die when she, eats, when she sees this. She'll be like, what? I'll be like, candy every week. We know. We know where to go. Miss mm. Janet, thanks for I might come to the game and sit by Janet. I know, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Chill yeah. playing. You might be a fight <laughs> because we're pushing and shoving. Somebody was trying to get something the other day. They were like, no, I want that piece. So, yeah. And then they put up, and then the boys sitting behind me, the grown men, putting wrappers in my purse. I'm like, really? It's big enough. No, I had my little purse with me. I don't take oh. my big purse oh, to the well, games. Oh, no, don't do that then. Why well, didn't they, they just drop it through the... Because they're still 12. Oh. They weren't doing it. They were just doing it to they aggravate me. They were doing it me. for meanness. Yes, they were aggravating me. Because they're chilt boys. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, enough about that. So, we're going to play Valley this week. That's Louisville, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not going to Louisville. Well, obviously, I'm not going. I'm either. not going. And we are not going to have any recording of the football game. Because Mr. Producer can't go either. He's going to be with his wife. In Asheville, North Carolina. That's so, what good husbands do. That's right. So we are not going to have any recordings of the game on Friday. But um, I'm confident that the Bearcat boys will take care of it. Pull it out. They're going to pull it out. Yeah, and so then they'll be, what, 4-0? Uh, 4 and oh. Four or 3. Well, uh, I was counting the scrimmage, I guess, that they played before that. 4. Oh, actually 4. 3. They're already 3-0? and oh? Yeah. Hmm. See? See, I can't keep up. Yeah. My brain is fried. Right. Okay, so other sports. So volleyball had a win and two losses in the last week. I don't have a lot of information about them, but I do know that. And then soccer. Soccer, beat, the soccer girls, right? Soccer girls beat Wilford County the other night. I think our and boys they play, soccer team maybe had a couple losses, but they, I think they may have had a win the other night in Frankfurt. Well, the boys, I mean, the girls' soccer team played last night, and they had a lightning delay, so they didn't get to finish. You'll have to reschedule it. And then okay. they play again tonight. Okay. The girls. The girls. And the boys play tonight, too. Okay. So, good At luck, home. boys and girls' soccer. Yes. Today's Thursday. You're not going to see this probably till late Thursday night or early Friday morning. But So, the boys are playing tonight at 7 o'clock, and the girls are playing after that. Okay. So. All right. All right. So, let's talk about. Oh. Stuff we got going on this weekend. Uh, we have several things. I think I highlighted some of this other stuff. Or do you want to? Oh, let's talk about the um, state fair real quick. Since okay. it's already over and done so with. So last week we did not get an update from Kendall Clinton. Yes, because I'm sure he was busy. Because he was exhausted, and I can only imagine I'm sure he was. how exhausted he was. Because the um, state fair ran from August 16th through the 26th. And I know he wasn't there every day, but I'm sure he was there as many days right. as he could be. And if you all did not get a chance to see the booth, the Anderson County booth on Facebook, you've got to go somewhere yeah, I saw and check it out. on Facebook. It was awesome. Um, more than 115 community volunteers came to Louisville each day throughout the fair to work the booth. That's amazing. And they acted as ambassadors for our community by interacting with visitors to the booth and helping tell our story. So there were special guests in the booth each day. There, they included artists, musicians, and others from Anderson County. By the end of the festival, there were more than 3,800 people who had registered to win four gift baskets. Um, the registration was done on iPads, which will allow the tourism, um, the tourism Mm -hmm. office to collect yeah. email addresses so that way they can send out emails and let them know about opportunities in Lawrenceburg, in Lawrenceburg so that more people can come and visit our community. Like I the think stuff it that we're going to talk awesome. about. Yeah, like the stuff so like summer's over but there's going to be lots of stuff happening this fall. I don't know that summer's over yet because it's really hot today. It's 90 degrees. It's today. 90 degrees. But anyway. Yeah. So, well, so this weekend. Yes, um, you go first. So September the 8th, this Saturday night at 7 o'clock, the Kentucky Truck Tuggers is having a truck pool out here at the um, truck pool track, which is in the park. And it starts at 7 p.m. It's $10 to get in, and all the money goes to the Hopkins and Boone families, um, the two young men that were killed in a car accident in Woodford County um, a couple weeks ago. So, because I know that they, every time they have one of those, the money is donated to some cause. And so that's who it's going to this time. So if you get a chance, um, you want to go out there to the, the um, truck, truck tug. That's harder to say than it looks. 
Okay, so next Saturday, September 15th, there are two events happening in Lawrenceburg. Mm -hmm. The um, Lawrenceburg Anderson County Home and Garden Tour is from 3 to 7. That's the one which, I want to go to. Yes, which will feature stops at 15 locations throughout the community, including the Rippy House. Tickets are $20 and can be purchased at the Tourism Office, the Farmer's Market, Rising Suns Winery, and Carver Hall's Garden Center. The other event is the Rotary Summerfest at the American Legion from 6.30 to 11, which is a fundraiser that will help pay for bleachers for the Anderson Community Park for the Rec Football League. Yep. Um, there'll be food and drinks along with live music by the Concrete Public Band. And you all remember they came here this summer. Yes, for the and summer I think concert series. We tried to find some of their music. Yes, I think we um, did on YouTube. Tickets are five dollars and are available at the door. And it's from six thirty to eleven. Yes. Yep. And it's at the fairgrounds. I don't know if you said that already. Yes. Okay. So that same weekend, um, the September the fourteenth. Mm -hmm. That Friday night is the car show, and um, I was already on that. Mr. Producer's over here mouthing stuff to me. I'm like, I'm already on that. Um, so the 14th is the car show, the Wheels of Time car show, and then their last one for the year is October the 12th. We'll remind you about that when we get closer. But then the 14th is also homecoming for the football team. The dance is the 15th. Who do they play the 14th? Franklin County. Ooh, that's another big rivalry. Yes, and don't forget, if you want to donate items mm -hmm. for the Mothers of Brothers, which is the mothers of the boys football players, um, you can donate items for their silent auction. So find the Mothers of Brothers. Um, they want it um, for leading up to that Friday night to the football game. So you can make those donations to them. Penny Smith Johnson is one of those people. If you, I don't know who all the other Mothers of Brothers is, but she's one of them. Um, so I'm sure if you want to make a donation for them, you can find somebody that you can make your donation to. Also, that Friday and Saturday, the Lawrenceburg Ghost Walk is yes. returning, and the walks begin at the Rippy House at 8 p.m. And what was what was that website? Is it kyghosttours.org? That sounds right. I think that's right. That um, sounds right. But you can find um, the. I think they have a Facebook page, so you ought to be able to find that on the Facebook page. Yep. Yeah. How to purchase That's, the ticket. That sounds right. Mm -hmm. um, so then we have on Thursday, September the 20th, the Anderson County Community Early Childhood Council invites you to the 2018 free Fall Festival at Buck Meadow Farm Fest. Oh, that is such an awesome place to have in Lawrence. Yes. So it's at, thir in case you don't know where it is, it's 1323 Nineveh Road. It's from 530 to 730 and the admission is free. They're going to have a five acre corn maze, a kitty corn maze, a walking trail, a jumping pillow, a petting zoo, a dairy and farm education center, the cotton pit, the corn crib, the ninja warrior, the trike track, straw mountain, and some slides. I mean, like, I had this thought in my head that I could totally be a ninja warrior. <laughs> And then I, I just see <laughs> myself. Your senses. Then I just see myself like getting on one of them things. And I totally fall. Yeah, but I've been on those big pillows before. Have you been on those big pillows before? Yes, yeah. they. Ju that's a new thing. Not at Divine's and Harrisburg. Well, no, but it's a new thing to the Buck Meadow. Oh, they yeah. just did that. I killed myself on it one time. Oh well, <laughs> if it involves jumping in any way, I don't need to do that. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. I've had babies. I don't need to do that. Yeah. For all you mamas out there. All you mamas know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Same for the trampolines, I'm just saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sky Zone, I, me and Julie Wooldridge, we took the boys several years back. And yeah. I was like, Julie, let's jump. <laughs> we were cheerleaders, we can do this. 15 minutes, Julie, let's do it. No. I jumped one time. Yeah, that's all it took. And I went, mm, no more for me. Yeah, Thank you. Done. Yeah, I'm going, mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, mm-hmm. Muscles Wasted my 15 yeah. minutes money. Muscles aren't as strong as they used to no, be. No, not at all. Okay, let's move okay. on to the next. So then the following weekend, listen to this. Every time I think of this, I think of B.J. Crane. I know, I do too. B.J. Crane. We will see the return of the reenactment of the Battles of Lawrenceburg and Dog Walk. This didn't happen in 2017. They did not happen. So it. the reenactments will be open to the public on Saturday, September 22nd and Sunday, September 23rd. I think maybe last year the weather was really bad and it got canceled. I don't remember. I think. A lot of times it's been the same weekend as the Burger Festival. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But for some reason, I was thinking they were supposed to have had it last year, but it was horrible weather and maybe they canceled it. So this year it's going to be the weekend before mm -hmm. the Burger Festival. So, and it's right over here at the county park. And it's really cool seeing their tents. Yes. It literally looks like a Civil War movie. 
And I always think of BJ Crane. Does do Tommy you see Vaughn do it too? Because he used to, for I some reason, I think about Tommy Vaughn too. Yeah, they used to do that. I don't know if they still do it or not. I don't know, but it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Samantha Crane, you gotta make sure uh, you show BJ that we're talking about him out here. Yeah, because he's all into that kind of stuff. He can tell you. He's very knowledgeable. If there's anything you want to know, he can spit it out at you about the Civil War. Yes, yeah. or anything in that time frame. He's That's on it. Awesome. He's all over. I love the Civil War. But, I mean, it's really a lot of gone with the wind. <laughs> Scarlet. Yeah. I just know that there wasn't no air conditioning back then. I wouldn't have been a very happy That's camper. right. <laughs> that and corsets. I'm out. Oh, now I might have been all right with some corsets. Suck it. Suck me in. Yeah, but then you can't eat and can't breathe. Well, I don't need to eat. I mean, I'm back on the wagon, remember? <laughs> yeah, except for that cheesecake. So but that was Saturday. I'm on the wagon because of the cheesecake. That's why God did not let me be born in that time because he was like, she'll never make it. She'll never make she'll it. She'll never make it. So we got to give her some air conditioning. Whew. Long line of fat people, y'all. Long line of fat people. Would you quit? <laughs> I was just saying. Okay, so then the next weekend in September, the 28th through the 30th, is the Burger Festival. I mean, this is busy. It is busy. It's ding, ding, ding. Because typically we have really good it's weather in fall. September. It's it, fall. It's usually not 90 degrees. Well. But it's usually dry, mm -hmm. even though it's supposed to rain for the next six days. And it's usually pretty dry, and it's usually good weather in Kentucky because mm -hmm. it's not really, really hot usually, and it's not really, really cold. Mm -hmm. So they have lots of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So um, they are having a couple contests. The Best Decorated Pumpkin. The Ugly Lamp Contest. They also had a quilt block contest, but we realized that the deadline for that's already come and gone, so... We're not going to promote that too much. I don't know why the deadline was so early, but it was. What's the big deal about an ugly lamp? It's just something fun if you have some gosh awful ugly lamp. I don't because I throw them away. And then the band Frontier. But who wants to acknowledge that they have an ugly, ugly lamp? Well, if you win money for it. Oh. Okay. You just keep it and re enter it again next year. Okay. Um, so, oh, so if you want. Um, the entry forms for those, you can contact 502-598-9748, 502-598-9748 to get a um, deadline or a uh, entry form for that. I'm sure they'll probably have it the day of. And then the band Frontier is going to play that weekend and they're having a meet and greet with the band when that happens. Okay, so because I don't have my old woman eyes on. Listen, She's I... She's got to read you about the stuff going on in the library. I forgot. I sent you this you on did. Messenger. And I want to bring this up okay, because I it. don't want to forget about it. There was a couple we things. We have... Um, we've talked about Ryan Strong um, and Ryan Womack. Womack several, well, the Ryan Strong. Yes. Hashtag Ryan Strong. Yeah. Um, and Ryan Womack and his battle a lot. And thank... Thankfully, Mr. Producer continues to remind everyone and puts that um, graphic up on our our show. But now we've got another family. Yes, from here that has just been um, given a diagnosis, and that is little 11-month-old Cheyenne Phillips. She's the daughter of Alan. And what is his wife's name? Uh, I did not Alan know and Brittany Phillips. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm telling you what, Sierra Hyatt, she's just got the biggest heart. She is the owner of Homemade Takeout here in town. And she brought this to the community's attention to let people know that she's going to be a, a spot to collect donations for this family. I'm not sure what kind of cancer little Cheyenne was diagnosed with, but this is an 11-month-old baby. Well, and here's what she said. She said the diagnosis with cancer was made last week. The prognosis is good. With the help of the amazing team of doctors and nurses at UK and prayers of family and friends, we believe that she's going to live a long, happy, healthy life. But, you know, they have to have time off from work, gas money, hospital bills, and everything else. So, she's doing a fundraiser for them. It just gets me. And, um... So, you can bring them. Um, she's going to provide meals for them for free. And now, there's an updated post. Hold on. Let's make sure. Updated. All yeah. proceeds are going directly That's to Alan and Brent. Are you bringing the, the up updated? Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm just making sure. I'm just making sure. Dang, Margaret. Shoo, this one get, it just. That's it why hits. I was talking, so you didn't okay, have to. Okay, sorry. 
so the monetary donations for bills, gas cards, um, grocery cards, restaurant cards, etc., are some ideas of ways to help. All checks need to be made payable to Alan or Brittany Phillips. If anyone feels like helping with a financial donation for them, you can drop it off or mail a check to Homemade Takeout at 106 West Jackson Street, Lawrenceburg. The money raised will go directly to them, and they are aware of it. The family, uh, Sierra, has their uh, blessing to do that, so the family is aware of it. So, Alan and Brittany, and especially sweet baby girl Cheyenne. Yes. Um, I, She's cutie. The, the one thing about Anderson County is that when one of our citizens um, hurts, we all step up and we all, um, we all come together and, and pray and we give and... Um, just know that you're in our thoughts and prayers and I would ask that all of our viewers think about them and if you find it in your heart to give to them please do so yes absolutely so okay. tell them about the library on I can't to the it. library and uh, Miss Thing with her old not women, good eyes old women eyes I got old women um, eyes so story time started on September 10th for the children's programs there is, um, for the month of September, bring a teddy bear for a fun, I am very thankful theme. Children will get to bring their teddy bears and talk about what they are grateful for. New play group program, join us for fun and learning on select Wednesdays at the play group. Children ages two to five will learn logic skills as they play with building blocks and work together with others. Um, there'll be Monday programs, Wednesday programs, 10 to 10 30 11 15 to noon 6 to 7 so um check out the um website what is the website aplkentucky.org for specific age groups and times um for the september programs for adults um every friday from three to five there's a help with computers class silent that has already passed mm -hmm. um crafts mm, it's already passed mm, that's already passed. Um, there's a Stars Traveling Book Swap, September the 8th at 11 a.m. A handicraft meeting, September the 8th from 1 to 3. Um, ooh, book club, Cornbread Mafia by James Higdon. We haven't talked about Crystal Rogers. I know, we haven't, but we'll okay. that in a minute. All right. Um, that is September the 10th from 6 to 7. I've been meaning to read that book forever. Me too. We need to do that. Ooh, that could be our next thing after Crystal Rogers is over. Well, because you know, they interview the author of Cornbread Mafia mm -hmm. on this week's episode, but we'll talk about that. Um, Writers Group, September 15th and the 20th. Writers Lab, September the 18th. So go to, there's some other things that are at the end of September. Go to aplkentucky.org backslash events for more information. Okay, so before we move on, I just want to point out something to all you viewers. Um, when I started wearing uh, reading glasses, the lowest that you can wear, um, I was the same age as she is now. I'm, my eyes are good. For now. They're good. Mm -hmm. I've always had better than 20-20 vision until I was her age. And then it's been going like this ever since. They're good. Just saying. Karma. Okay, Crystal Rogers. Crystal Rogers. Okay. The disappearance of Crystal Rogers this yep, last so week. We, it was good stuff again. Because there's only one more episode. I know. We gotta find her. So they did interview the um, writer of Cor 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 the author. Writer's not the word I'm looking for. Author. They did interview the author of The Cornbread Mafia, mm -hmm. a book about Marion County, which I've been meaning to read for years and I've never read it because everybody says it's really good. Um, if you're kind of a bluegrass conspiracy kind of person, they say it's on the same, if you ever read that book, um, they say it's on the, the same kind of line as that. I read Bluegrass Conspiracy because I knew some of the people in it. Like a lot of people in it. And I was like, well, in a lot of places. So I still need to read that, but they actually interviewed him, um, not because they think that he knew anything about it. I think they were just wanting his opinion because he had investigated some other stuff, too. So um, what can we tell them that we're not giving away anything? Um, they called KSP to come mm -hmm. collect some evidence at a site. Yes. Um, they're waiting on that. Mm -hmm. They also... What else? I just watched it two nights ago and I can't remember. Oh, I have a whole synopsis because my girl Stacy Kurtzinger, yeah. she's on vacation and didn't get to watch the episode, so she's like, "You got to tell me everything that happened." So I ought to know. I could probably just read it all. Um, what else happened? 
Well, oh, they had the ATF man uh-huh. that went to the field where uh-huh. Tommy Ballard was murdered. They had him come to where Jason Ellis was murdered yes. and had him do a little analysis out there. And he believes that he it knows was where the... Uh-huh where the actual gunman was and right. all that stuff. I mean, right. that he he's good. But nobody on that show has still not pointed out that the tree limbs that were in the road that Jason Ellis was picking up and moving had been cut in the same fashion that the tree limbs that had been cut over were Tommy Ballard Well, they kind of talked killed. about that. They were talking about all the similarities between Tommy Ballard and Jason Ellis. They were talking about there were lots of similarities okay. between that. And do you remember... They talked about, they had another person who was come forward talking about a vehicle that they saw. Yes. The morning that Tommy Ballard was. That was backing up. Yes. The morning that Doc, Tommy Ballard was killed. And they talked about the tail lights. Yes. Do you know who I think that tail lights are going to come back to? Who? Hey. I think it's going to make. I think it's going to match a tail light of a particular cruiser that might have been driven by somebody in Parchtown Voice to Mm-hmm, because it was like a Challenger or a Charger. Uh-huh, and what do they drive? Challengers or Chargers. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, they also are going to talk to an inmate. Yes. That wrote a letter about a bunch of stuff. Now, they seem to know a lot of stuff that they probably shouldn't know. I know, but I'm, I'm a little skeptical. Right, sure. Now, I'm going to tell you all, there was one time that I got a letter from an inmate mm-hmm. that started talking about my kids. It freaked me yeah. out and I ran to the jail for those of you all who don't know inmates write letters a lot <laughs> usually to judges but they feel the need to write inmate or inmates feel the need to write letters a lot for and whatever when, reason and when he I guess because I got so much time when he figured out what he had done he was like oh my gosh I'm so sorry oh, so he wasn't threatening so he, he was, didn't no, no 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 but when he realized that I was thinking those were my children babies mm-hmm. when he was like oh my gosh I never should have included that i apologize and there were reasons why and i'm not going to go into that but i freaked out and ran to the jail yeah. it's like i got to talk to this guy like right now right now right now so but in this letter from this inmate on the crystal rogers mm-hmm. show what they talked about was the fact that he or she they don't say what, i think it was a no i think they uh, said a he well at first they didn't and then i think they maybe slipped up and kind of said it was a he but then they kind of was like well they so whatever oh, yeah, maybe so anyway, they they no, they said it was Roderer, and that's only he. Okay. So he they said he was saying things in the letter that hadn't been released to the public. Mm-hmm. So there was only one way for him to know that mm-hmm. was either he was either involved somehow, meaning he was a witness or an eyewitness, or he was getting information from somebody who had firsthand knowledge of that. <sighs> So good, y'all. Make and sure that's you kinda catch they, up. Yeah, that's kind of where they left it. And there's only one more episode. One more episode. And of course, y- you know, we know that they've not found her killer. So we know that we're not going to come across anything that's overly, mm-hmm. you know, fascinating by then because they're still looking. So we're assuming killer because we're assuming she's not surviving. Right. So, okay. Last thing for the day. The Woody Dixie Pets of the Week. We finally have them back. Yes. So, Ruby... Is a three-month-old female kitten that's ready for a new home. She's sweet and cuddly but loves to play. Ruby's sister has already been adopted, and she would like to get a home, too. Um, she hasn't made any new friends yet, but um, we... So they weren't sure if she's a good fit for a home with other cats because she hasn't made any new friends yet. And if Ruby doesn't catch your eye, come out and check out all the other cats and kittens that they have. Aw, there's little Butch. He's a beautiful 40-pound coon hound, around a year and a half old. He was very timid when he first came to the shelter and didn't even know how to walk on a leash. But now he enjoys walking in a harness and can't get enough attention. So he has the most precious expression and the sweetest eyes. This gentle boy is not nosy or hyper. Noisy, sorry. He's, you know he's no, nosy. All dogs are nosy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Noisy or hyper. He's great with cats and other dogs. And Butch would be a great fit for a family with young kids because he doesn't have a mean bone in his body. Go get Butch! Yes. Go get you an animal. Go get you a pet. So I think that's all we have this week, right? I think so. And so now we've got to run because she's got somewhere she's got to be and I've got somewhere I've got to be. And Mr. Producer's got somewhere he's got to be. And I guess we're... Oh, and I really okay. hope that we didn't get ourselves in trouble. No, but she did win a trial today. It's not a matter of winning. It's a matter of justice being served. Correct. She still won. I'm just saying. So, I, can, I can get some sleep tonight. Yes, yeah. You don't have 14. She texts 
Okay, first of all, I let, me, let me preface this with, I thought she texted me at 4.38 this morning, but she did show me on her phone where she sent it last night, and for whatever reason, it didn't come to my phone until 4.38 this morning. I was like, why are you texting me at 4.38 in the morning? But I couldn't text her at 4.38 this morning. Because she was away. Because I was away. Because I couldn't sleep. So now you can... I was all pumped up for my trial. Yeah, so now you can go to sleep and go crash. Yeah. Go. So, we will see you next week. I don't know where we're going to be. I don't know what day we're going to do it yet. I don't know. But we'll see you next week. Bye, y'all. Hopefully it'll be live. Bye. Have a great week.